Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be constructing our first task scheduler using generators instead of threads. Previously, we created a bunch of threads and we started them. And there was a task scheduler in the background, the operating system, bringing in threads to a core and removing them from the core. Now we're going to do the same thing, but using a generator instead. By the way, the code I'm about to show you here is partially taken uh, from another talk by David Beasley, which is a fantastic guy. I'm going to link you to a couple of his talks afterwards. But I wanted to show you again in my own words how to do this just to help you understand. So threads are not performing so well in Python with the communication overhead and you know and the gill issues. But using generators is another way of achieving multitasking, doing multiple things at once in Python. But again, remember, multitasking is doing things that look like they're happening at the same time, but they are really not. Parallelism is about doing things actually at the same time. And in Python, you know, we cannot do parallelism because of the gill, unless we launch multiple processes. So here we've got our countdown. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a set of tasks. So here we've created three tasks that are all similar. They, they're all, all this, this generator. A countdown from 10, a countdown from 5, and a countdown from 20. But now we can start providing them slices instead of on a core, we can start providing them slices on the main thread. So while tasks, this just means while it is not empty, we're going to do that the task is tasks zero, that's the first task in here. We're going to remove the task from the list. And then we're going to try to do x is next of the task, we're going to print x. And then we're going to append the task again. Okay, so all that we're doing here is we're gonna get the first task in our list. We're going to remove it from the list. So our list is going to end up as these two tasks. We're going to get a new variable x, which is going to be the next of the task. So in this case, 10 for the first one, we're going to print it out. And then we're going to append it over to the end of our list again. If we encounter an accept on stop iteration, remember, this is what gets raised when we run out of values of a generator. Then we're just going to print task finished. And that's it. When we print task finished, because we try to get the next value of something, but it fails, we are not going to append it back to the task. Okay, when we try to get the next and that gives us a stop iteration, we will not run either of these two. All right, let's run this file. And as you can see, we start at the top with 10, 5 and 20 and they go down one by one until you see task finished. That's the five. Then you see task finished. That's for the 10. And then the 20 sort of takes up all the time in the CPU or in this case in the main thread and eventually finishes as well. Notice that these tasks are all are, are quite simple. They don't really do much, but um, this is an example of multitasking in Python without using threads. You've got a task doing something, another task doing something else, and another task doing something entirely separate. And they are collaborating, doing collaborative multitasking in order to complete the things all at the same time. You can see how we could use yield in any circumstance to suspend a task temporarily and then bring it back at some point in the future. So for example, if you asked for user input, you could then yield and run your complex mathematical operation. When the user replies, you could yield your mathematical operation and go back to your user input and deal with that. Going back to the example in the lecture a few videos ago. So these yields, all you have to do is put them in the right place. And then you could potentially avoid blocking operations, you could avoid point in time where your Python code is just waiting to do things. Okay. Of course, if you've got a task that doesn't yield, then you have a problem because that one is just going to clog the CPU. Uh, or, and if you have a task that yields, but it takes a very long time between one yield and another, that task is going to 
take up a lot of time and the other task is not going to have enough time. If that's the case, <laughs> if you have a task that takes a long time to run while the others take a very small amount of time to run, you could offload the work to a separate thread or to a separate process using, as we've seen already, the thread pool executor or the process pool executor. Okay. And actually calling next on a function and sort of going back to a suspended function is cheaper than, uh, you know, changing from one thread to another. So Python has been developed, so this is really cheap, really easy to do. So it can be really fast to use these generators instead of threads if that's what you need. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at some more of this. And the purpose of the next few videos is to build up your knowledge of how this asynchronous development works up until we arrive at modern Python and how modern Python does asynchronous development. Now, okay, I'll see you on the next video.